Hey, good morning, everybody. Good day to you. It's Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. It is Thursday, February 18th. So I hope y'all get out there and have a great day today. I have a lot of information for y'all. A lot of y'all uh, don't know. You don't really need to know. It's kind of behind the scenes. Maybe I'll make a video of it one day. But I actually do about four to six hours of research before I, I make this video for y'all. I just want to make sure I got all the good information for y'all. Also, some information of what's to come. I show that could be a good possibility for a second Arctic blast. I will go through that with you what we have. Now, if you've never been here before, hello, my name is Mark. <laughs> Hit that subscribe button. I do upload every single day. And if there's any serious changes within 12 hours of the video, I will make an update in the afternoon. It's just lately, the information has been pretty spot on. Except for uh, Tennessee, their, their, their temperatures changed pretty drastic uh, yesterday. And they didn't see much snow. I uh, pretty much it, it come down for a lot of people, but it didn't stick. Thank you once again for all the wonderful blessings that all y'all gave for Texas in the comments. Y'all are an awesome community. I love y'all so much because I think it's making a difference. Also, Texas, uh, uh, I did check out the people that control y'all power companies. There's actually three different uh, power companies that controls the whole state. Now, Erco said that they're going to put the power back on as much as they can today. And you can I'll show you the numbers. But they also said if it starts weakening certain parts of the system uh, where generators are going down, they're going to start cutting people back off again. Let's hope that don't happen. I believe the prayers are working. The numbers are going down greatly. Also, we have that severe weather still in the southeast. And if you remember from my video a few days ago, if you're new to my channel, my people knew this almost a week ago about these tornadoes. <laughs> They're starting to acknowledge that these tornadoes are going to exist and it is going to be for today. Now, this video is going to be coming up a little bit late this morning than usual. That's because I have a big variety of information for you today. And I really want to share it with you because you need to know about it. And it will help you know a little bit of what's going on. Now, we'll be going over the ice totals, the snow totals for the, the system that we have in the Northeast. And if you remember, if you, or if you've never been here, the link's in the description for timestamps to any part of this video that you came here to see. Whether it's the storms, the totals, or whatever information is going to be different, it will be in the description right below the title. And I'll always put a link above that from National Weather Service so you can get update information every time you click on it for what the new alerts and warnings are. Now, if you like in-depth uh, information about your weather, hit that like button, guys, and let's get on, on with the information. And you can see the lightning strikes coming off of Florida, coming into Georgia as well. Let me turn off the temperatures so you can see it. The main area for tornadoes today is going to be pretty much from Crestview all the way around central Georgia, all the way to the coast near Savannah, all the way down to Palm Coast, and possibly over... Uh, a little bit west of Orlando, maybe a little bit further northern. We will see. Now, as far as your power information, a lot of people in the red, but it numbers have changed. Now, Oregon, you're still 100,000 people out without power, which I don't understand. This has been going on for quite some time now, and that color should have changed. Y'all should be doing better. I don't know why they're not getting y'all power on quicker because y'all been at that number before Texas got bad, and now that Texas is getting a little better. Uh, we had 600, a little over 600,000 people without power in Texas. And this is supposed to imp improve dramatically today. And like I said, uh, if it starts weakening the system, they did say that they were going to start shutting it off again. Uh, and every time they shut off each generator, it's like 1,000 customers. So they will be doing that to make sure it stays stable. Louisiana, you're over 100,000 people without power as well. Mississippi, over 150,000 people without power. Uh, Alabama and you're already at 10,000 people without power and this is just beginning so it's going to be affecting Alabama Georgia South Carolina North Carolina because North Carolina is getting that ice and possibly even Texas although the system did run through once already and it is affecting people in the Northeast as you can see and Texas is fine they got about 5,000 people without power so they're standing strong but these numbers are going to change now, here's your link from National Weather Service. Like I said, it will be right on top of the description. You just click on it, get the information that you need. But it, the one I'm sending it to is not here. I'm going to send you to the one here, National Weather Service, not Pivotal Weather or any other site. And they do have a tornado watch for the Florida Panhandle now in southwest Georgia. Uh, they finally acknowledging it. So if you're one of my people, you knew about this almost a week ago. 
But all your warnings, all your watches are here. Please click on that link. It will be updated every time you do. And the power.us is in there also. And those that are new to my channel, uh, when you go to the power.us, this really helps you know if your area is getting uh, picked by getting its power back on. Like if you go and you just click on your state, let's say Mississippi, not only can you see pretty much the track that the storm went on, but you can see which county and who's without power. But it shows you who's working on it, and this updates every 10 minutes. And whichever power company is working on one close to your area, and it is turning to a better color, then you're hopefully next. And your CPC outlook for the next 6 to 10 days is getting a above average temperatures for the Midwest to the Northeast. And this is going to swing around to the southeast and finally the south i'll show you but also the southwest you're a little bit above uh, average temperatures for the next six to ten days but well below average in the northwest and it's going to stay that way for a while and for the eight to 14 day outlook it still stays well above average in the north in the midwest and in the southeast so the whole eastern region of the u.s is going to be above average temperatures soon this this cold weather is starting to go away but I do show that it is going to start coming back a little bit. Now on the very top of the screen is going to be the 10 millibar level for temperatures. And I got it going fast. That way you can see the motion of this cold air. And it will be leaving uh, by the end of this month. However, northern Texas, the panhandle of Texas, it's going to be cooler for y'all. A couple of little dips. But it is going to start warming up. For everybody in the south, and you can see that clearly from the one on the top. Now, Texas, you will have a warm, warmer <laughs> spill of warm air come Friday, but it will get cool again as it turns night. But when Saturday kicks in, and especially Saturday evening into Sunday, y'all gonna be in a warmer temperatures, and the cold air will be gone, and y'all will be well into the 50s, maybe even the 60s. So by Monday or Tuesday, y'all y'all should all be melted all empty of all this weather so that would be a really good thing but i got y'all temperatures right above my head that way you can see and i got it moving kind of slow but a little bit where you can see it move i know i do edit the video and you know, i might cut out a part <laughs> on a run because I, i'm editing the video but you'll see that the temperatures are starting to come back uh, it's mostly going to be from the southeast to the southwest of texas and then it's going to start moving towards the northeast just like this cold air is moving so it will get warmer for y'all soon now this is the uh, AO, this is the Arctic Oscillation, and like we was talking a while back, uh, just a little refresh for anybody that's new, I did notice that we hit 30,000 subscribers last night, guys. Thank you so much for joining our lovely family. We're our very helpful and very loving community. It seems like we just hit 20,000 last week. <laughs> but the AO shows that the Arctic Oscillation shows that the cold air will be leaving and making its, its upwards pull. It's already in its, its uh, positive phase to be leaving. It will totally be gone sometime around the 17th, according to the euro. And the euro is not showing anything else coming back down. It shows a little dip uh, around the 21st of February, but after that, it goes up with another little dip at the end of February. Now, GFS has been picking up a few things. Uh, GFS has always showed it showed the first dip that we had of the Arctic Oscillation, the first cold air, and it was correct about uh, how far down it went because Euro showed it was a negative four, which is a deep trough in the air, uh, and GFS always showed a negative six. So GFS is a longer range model. I mean, you got your, your Euro is better for short range, but Euro does make uh, EPS, but Euro does make EPS, which is your ensemble prediction system that they made. And it was made by the European uh, Center, but it was made to get a, a better prediction forecast confidence and what's to come, which is funny because they kind of con contradict themselves. The one that they built for that is more accurate than what Euro is showing according to what's trendy. Uh, GFS has been showing for a while that by the beginning of March, the end of February, it will go into another negative phase, more cold air coming, and it's in between a negative one and a negative two. Now, neutral is right at the North Carolina line, just so people know, when you're talking about neutral phase, take North Carolina, the very top line, and go straight across the country. So a negative one to a negative two would be the top of Texas, uh, like the, really on the very edge of the panhandle, but it shouldn't be as bad uh, as this. Although there is one ensemble that does show that it does go to a negative five again. And that's the only one that's showing that and it's not trending. 
But if y'all remember for hurricane season, when we had these hurricanes coming to golf, the H Wharf was the only model showing the intensity of Cat 4 and Cat 5 of some of these hurricanes, while the other ones were playing it down as a Cat 2. And it turned out to be uh, correct. And it was the only one that was correct. So don't give in to one of these ensembles uh, model runs uh, being so far fetched by itself. If you got that possibility, there is a possibility. However, I don't have a lot of confidence in this one model. But this is your average. is down to a, almost a negative two is the average of all the ensemble runs. That's what this is here. And it, it could be some more cold air coming. Matter of fact, I think there is. Uh, Euro's not correct on that. Even Euro's uh, mid-range forecast uh, confidence system, the, the ensemble prediction system, it even shows that there's going to be a dip in the beginning of March that's going to be almost to a negative one. So even their own prediction system that they made to be better than just a regular European center, it's showing them wrong. So I do believe we will get more cold air. And it is trending. Even the GEFS is showing that right around the 28th, it's going to start dipping down into some cold air, and it will be around to about March 6th or 7th before it starts going back up. So it is trending that it is going to happen. And North Carolina, I did look. Uh, it gets way too warm, well above uh, freezing, all the way down to 900, almost 900 millibars, which is pretty low. Then it dramatically, with the cold air down below, freezes to like 30 degrees. I mean, it has good precipitation the whole time, so it will be uh, a heavy uh, freezing rain but I do show that it will be freezing rain and not snow because it gets way too warm before uh, it goes to the ground and it might bug you because if you look at your temperatures you can see where the, the, pre the precipitation is coming across that it is 29 30 31 degrees and real quick to the 32 but there is freezing temperatures so that's what's going to freeze it down to freezing rain I don't see the temperatures uh, being ice because it only goes down to a 29 or a 30. So that's really on the edge. It really needs to be a little bit lower and, and enough time to freeze into ice. I believe that will be freezing rain. Uh, let me show you the temperatures up, up, and up aloft. And you can see it here on the 850 millibar level that you still have warm air uh, at 3,000 to 5,000 feet, keeping this very warm before it comes to the ground. So that's why it's coming down as freezing rain. Now, as we get into the 18Z, which is right around 1 p.m. Eastern time, it, it begins to get a surface low pressure. This upper level low on the East Coast that's bringing all this precipitation from the Atlantic, plus the moisture coming from, this, from the Gulf up the Southeast, is really feeding a lot of freezing rain uh, to, to Virginia and North Carolina, uh, also uh, Delaware, Southeast Maryland, the, the Mid-Atlantic. But you're getting snowfall for the Northeast. But it's switching energies back and forth amongst these two uh, upper level lows. And when the surface uh, low pressure comes this afternoon, right around 1 p.m. Eastern time, I say from noon uh, to 1, maybe even 11 uh, this morning, it starts getting energy and it becomes that tornado threat for you guys. And you will get a few flakes rolling across the south, uh, northern Louisiana. You may see some flakes also northern Mississippi and central Tennessee. You will see some flakes, and it might be some, some slight accumulation. But southwest Texas, I'm showing you still getting that snowfall. It won't be as heavy, but it will be pockets where it's heavier than other counties. Now, when you look into the Cape values, and I moved the date to the very top for you guys uh, so I can get it close in shot for you guys. You can see the energy coming off uh, of the dew points, very warm. Uh, warm, warm water uh, and warm air uh, creates convection. It creates lift. So all this lift coming in with these, with these winds is going to create some rotation, and you will be start getting possibilities for, for tornadoes. I do expect uh, a good spot for tornadoes would be South Georgia and, and North uh, Florida. I've been showing that has been trending for almost a week now. But to pinpoint it a little bit, you can see the Cape values rise up, especially for central Georgia. And it, it does begin off as a weak supercell. I don't see the uh, hail yet, but I do show that some big hail is possible out of these tornadoes and out of these, these storms in the southeast. It's going to get a little bit rough. You're in marginal for tornado at this time, 
Uh, I'll show you exactly where you at, but there is starting to get weak and it's not really showing a good supercell. But in this county, right around here for, for southeast Georgia, it's been showing this for a while. And as you go a little bit southern into Georgia, not far, I mean, the whole area is, is hyperactive for convection. It starts getting almost an inch of hail coming out of this, uh, these tornadoes, uh, these systems. And on this one, I'm, I'm picking this up. It's a little bit further so southern, so the whole area is going to be a, a hot spot for this. And then when I go a, a little bit more southern, it picks up to where you have a chance for three quarters to an inch of hail uh, coming out of these systems. And you're not even in a marginal anymore. Now you are in a tornado uh, possibility that could come out of this precipitation and out of this system. And this is as far as pretty southern. It's right on the edge. You can see the hotness of the Cape values. But it's, this whole area is, is going to be really bad. Now, I checked all the way for South Carolina as well as the edge of North Carolina. I know that y'all been having some system problems. I'm not showing that the Cape values are there for enough convection. However, you will be having severe uh, thunderstorms coming your way, which is bad enough. Now, I'm not really showing that the panhandle of Florida, uh, as far as near Tallahassee, you will have some severe storms come by. I'm not showing that the convection is there for a tornado for you but still be aware because you have some severe storms and it'll be very easy for that tornado to pop up so i do believe that you are in a risk even though it's not showing it anymore in the model data which is good but when it trends for a long time and all of a sudden the model data says ah don't believe that okay because the information is correct i do believe that it's still a chance for a tornado threat for y'all in the western uh florida panhandle but as you start going into Florida, just to check out and see what, the, what their chances are for this to be carried over into their state as well, you do have three quarters inch hail possibility coming out of these cells and it's, in, it's well into the tornado risk. It's not marginal. It is a possibility to get a tornado for northern Florida. Now, Florida is going to see a lot of severe thunderstorms, especially southern Florida and southwest Florida. I'm not showing that that is popping up as a possibility. Matter of fact, it starts going down into a marginal as you go a little further uh, but this is showing that it could be a possibility for a significant hail of over two inches two and three quarters inch hail is a possibility uh, for a little bit further down into florida but western florida it won't be a tornado for you there still is that possibility because you have a lot of severe weather but i'm not showing the convection is there however you are in a, in a significant hail chance for a three quarters, one and three quarters, even two and three quarter inch hail uh, for Western Florida. And you will be having some severe weather. There will be a lot of good, strong Cape values causing this severe weather uh, and with some, with some uh, convection. But you are in, some, in a, a risk for a big hail. Now, as you go, you go into the zero Z for Friday, you can see that the Northwest is getting heavy precipitation. Uh, and some of it is turning snow for Washington and Oregon but they are still getting heavy precipitation and they do have 100,000 people without power right now. So this has been going on for a while and this is probably the last thing you wanna hear. But the Southeast is getting, our, is getting our severe thunderstorms, it's still going on and you are getting some patches of snow that's moving across the Northeast. And on the 12Z on Friday, you still have a lot of moisture in the South and the East Coast. This is about 7 a.m. for the East Coast. You still got rainfall. You still got a little bit of freezing rain from North, North Virginia, South Maryland, uh, also Southern uh, New Jersey. While Northern New Jersey is in snow. Now on the 18Z by Friday, pretty much everything's starting to get clear for you as you get a swath of snow that's starting to move across and you're still getting some rain in the Northwest, but it has lightened up. Uh, but now the big system is starting to become a, a surface low pressure off these coasts as a 1010 as it moves away is still putting snowfall for the northeast a little bit but these rain bands are going to start moving offshore and it's still going to have a little rain band that's going to go all down florida as it moves east but you can see that some people will still be still be seeing some snow as this system moves away the temperatures are with it is well frozen for y'all uh, central to eastern Long Island, especially eastern Connecticut, Rhode Island, and central to eastern Massachusetts, southern Vermont, southern uh, uh, New Hampshire, as well as central New Hampshire. Over here on the edge, eh, wishy-washy, so I really don't want to say northern New Hampshire. I don't believe all this model data, but I do believe in those spots. And this is a, the same shot. This is Friday, the 18Z. 
This is right around 1 p.m. Uh, for y'all. But you can see that this still has convection in these severe storms as they move down Florida. They will be moving east, but they're still going to go down Florida. These are very long rain bands. But I do show not only for today, we still, this, this threat for tornadoes will go into tomorrow for eastern Florida. On the far east of Florida, I'm not showing that it has any significant hail, but you are in a marginal risk uh, for tornadoes, and that's for uh, eastern, northeastern. Now, by Sunday, this is a 18Z. This is right around 1 p.m. This is actually noontime, uh, central time, 1 p.m. eastern. But we do have a surface low pressure that builds up out of this energy coming across the Pacific Northwest, and it will become a, uh, a, a surface low pressure. It's shown an upper level low. It will strengthen. But right now we have temperature battle because this is 1 p.m. and it's going daytime heating still. But as it moves, it's going to be chasing uh, temperatures dropping going into the night. And you can see here how close your temperatures are. Not only is it Sunday now, Saturday into Sunday, Texas. Look, you're in 50, 60 degrees. You're, you're warming up well, as well as Louisiana, Mississippi, the whole south. It is changing uh, the temperature change. So you are going to be warming up. That's a good thing, uh, even that it happened by Saturday. But you can see from Missouri, it's a very close line. Like northeast Missouri is right on the edge of 32 degrees. But there is a chance for that to be freezing rain, just so you know. It could be freezing rain, then snow coming over that. But it's a very thin line across the Corn Belt of where who's going to get snowfall and who's not. And you can see a closer look here, just how close that literally is for... Who's going to be getting snow out of this system? Who's going to be getting rain? Like very central Illinois. I mean, even Chicago, it looks like you're going to be getting snow a little bit. And it could change over to rain because it's chasing those daytime uh, heatings. And, and the cold air is going away. The warmer temperatures are moving in. And the zero Z for Monday shows you that. As the system, because the system's literally right here by now. And it's chasing 32 degree temperatures. And you can see where these systems went when you check the precipitation, see how much rain that everybody get. You can see that it was heavy for northern Florida all across uh, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. So y'all did get the heaviest part of the rain. And all this red you see is anywhere from 2 to 3 inches. The bright whites is closer to 3. But this is a lot of heavy rainfall as, as well as the northwest. I'll show them to you. You can see how it's a couple inches for the southeast. And I did check this by Tuesday the 23rd. I did run it all the way through to get the totals. Uh, you can see it is a couple of inches all along the east coast. And the northwest, y'all did get some heavy as well. Northern California got over two inches uh, in going into Oregon. But northern Oregon, over five inches. Washington, over six inches. Now, Portland, look, you got one inch. But right off the coast five to six inches. But Tacoma, Washington, you're going to get over two inches of precipitation while Seattle only got over an inch. So there's going to be some heavy rainfall and it's going to be localized in some areas. Now this is your snowfall totals according to the European. And I don't believe uh, this one because it's, I mean, I hope y'all get your heavy snow for those that want it. But it is showing a lot of heavy snowfall in the Northeast. It's showing up to six to nine inches uh, for Pennsylvania and other parts of New Jersey, West Virginia, and North and North Virginia. But I'm not showing, I don't think that's right. I think with the system changing those daytime temperatures, I believe that this is going to be less. Now, the GFS is also confirming that it will be heavier amounts of snow in Pennsylvania and the Northeast. And anything in this, in this pink and red is 6 to 10 inches, guys. Uh, I'm not believing that though. I know it's trending. That's why I'm showing it to you. I gotta show you the trends. And but I don't. I think it's really gonna be a timing issue on whether this chases the daytime heating or whether it comes a little bit quicker in the night. And this is what the GDPS shows, the Canadian model. They, I think that's what they see because they they're agreeing that it will be less uh, for y'all. So you saw what the pink was. The pink was anywhere from six to ten inches. But I'm going to read off these totals, guys, because I believe that these are probably going to be your correct totals. I think it will chase the daytime heating. Now, as far as all that information goes, for your northeast, the worst part, and you can see your area, pause the video, see your section. The worst part is southeast Maryland and southern Delaware. Y'all might see some flakes, but there's going to be no accumulation. And here's your angles as well as you can see for northern Alabama and northeast Mississippi as well. 
But here's your Tennessee, your Kentucky. Here's your Corn Belt view, so you can see who got the snowfall. It did not go in the floor. Uh, it did not go into North Carolina. Maybe some flurries around Asheville, but that's about it. But far eastern Tennessee, I'm showing that you're not going to be getting uh, any snowfall. You might see some. It may build up in the grass, but I don't think it'd be heavy. And Michigan is showing that you, there's a good chance for you to get from two to three more inches of snowfall by this time. More heavier on the western, a little bit on the eastern, but I don't show it goes all the way to Detroit. All the way to Detroit. But Ohio, northeast, central to northeast, right above uh, Dayton, central to northeast is where it's going to be the heaviest for yours from where it's three to five inches. While Indiana, you're going to be one to two inches because it's chasing this daytime heating. And you can see your shot over here for Mississippi and Alabama, Tennessee. And it's more of an eastern northeast for Arkansas as, as well as southeast for Missouri that's pretty much where the hot spot was everything else was too warm temperatures so you got a lot of rain out of that swath of snow for sure but southwest Texas it pretty much built it up more and it still shows a localized area and you can see it has still got a heavy spots for some snow so southwest Texas you still have a chance for some heavy accumulation from the system that's coming by uh, South Dakota you did get a couple of inches out of this while everybody else around you got very light amounts so you did get the heaviest amount because the western side of this system rotating counterclockwise through the precipitation on you. Now, southwest U.S., y'all didn't get much love as far as a uh, buildup on all this snowfall. It did drop some, but it's not heavy amounts. And for the northwest, you can see your, your additions for your snow. There is a lot of accumulation, but heavy amounts is in the higher altitudes, of course. And by this time, also the freezing rain to ice is not a lot more buildup. You can see there's only a little bit more uh, for Texas and Louisiana and also Mississippi. You're going to get a little bit, but while Alabama isn't going to get a whole bunch, but it's going to be northern. But y'all, all y'all power, it should be coming on. Y'all should have been in warm temperatures for days by now. This is Tuesday the 23rd, guys. But it is showing heavy uh, for the Mid-Atlantic. And you can see North Carolina get some good ice in there. Also, Virginia, you got some snow away in the north, but you got a lot of good ice. But I'm still well. showing it's not going all the way towards Raleigh. It's actually wrapping around, and that could actually be from the city. I mean, you have cement. You have warm cement that does carry heat. I mean, that heat does rise later at night when there's cooler temperatures. And just to check to see if anything else was coming after this, just for a quick look on the 26th, there's a surface low pressure that does form in the central U.S. It does bring thunderstorms, severe weather. It does bring more snowfall. Too far to go into it, but we will keep up with it. All right, guys, now this is always where I'll show you what your weather is going to look like as it moves through. And also, National Weather Service is picking up. It's been picking up all night from Texas all the way to Florida about uh, tornado possibilities. But I didn't show that as a possibility i don't even know why they put that to be honest but there was no tornado but today however is going from western florida to southwest south carolina now once again i uh, do apologize for the late upload for today guys i like to try to stay on a steady schedule so you know when to expect me i know there's been a lot of censorship going on a lot of people are still telling me they're not getting notified as well as my buddy Box Soldier, he made a couple videos yesterday, and as soon as he posted them videos, I mean, they were taken down by YouTube immediately. So there's been some censorship going on, and he's a very religious guy. I love you, Bach. But even in our dark time, guys, God has a reason for everything. He, every, nothing he does is by mistake, so everything is for a reason. Even the reason why he should it was written in the King James Version, and I read no other. You shouldn't change these words. But even in our dark times, we should praise our Lord. For God give and God take away. We all live by his mercy. Amen. So I'm going to read and we're going to praise our Lord this morning. Thank him for what he's given us so far. And ask him to help this get his power on, back on as soon as possible. We need his power on. So I'm going to play this for you guys. I'm going to shut up. This, this video is going to take long enough to edit. And God bless you all. Psalm 26. Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in mine integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord. Therefore, I shall not slide. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. For thy loving kindness is before mine eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. 
I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go in with dissemblers. I have hated the congregation of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. I will wash mine hands of innocency, so will I compass thine altar, O Lord, that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works. Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house and the place where thine ho their honor dwelleth. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men, in whose hands is mischief, and their right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, I will walk in mine integrity. Redeem me, and be merciful unto me. My foot standeth in an even place, and the congregations will I bless the Lord. Amen. God bless you all today. Hope you all have a wonderful day today. If you have a moment, please share this on social media. Support my channel. I do appreciate y'all. And all you new people, welcome. God bless you and your families. May you stay safe. All glory. All glory. Good and bad. Does go to God. God of Jacob. Y'all have a great day, guys. Amen.